bags are packed are you ready to go this time tomorrow we'll be on the road riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other Everyone, welcome to Children of Erte. We're so excited to be here again on our Tuesday slot. Uh, first, as usual, we'll jump to Adam with the sponsors. We have some great sponsors tonight. <laughs> Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms is the first one. You can find a code for a free Electrum chest on the overlay, and it is bouncing around in chat. Idle Champions is an incredible game where you get to collect a variety of D&D characters and battle waves and waves of the nastiest creatures in the multiverse. Uh, so check it out and get a free chest code for an Electrum chest. And we also have Die Hard Dice. You can use the code AIRTE to get 10% off the Die Hard Dice. And thanks to an exhaustive list from Marcus Reedner, uh, we <laughs> yeah. have alliterative alphabetical. And this week we are on the C's. And so Die Hard Dice has gifted us with incredible crisis crystals to crisis roll each crystal. and every oh. week on the show. So check out Die Hard Dice. Uh, <laughs> and we are also going to be giving away uh, some gift cards for Die Hard Dice. So pay attention to chat and see when those are given out. And finally, tonight, you will hear the dulcet tones of Sirenscape because epic <laughs> games need <laughs> epic sounds. <laughs> I am Adam Bradford. I'm the CDO at Demiplane, and I uh, live stream and play characters that are imaginary in this structured <laughs> make-believe environment. And tonight I am playing Silas Jordan. Yay! Uh, hey, everybody. I'm Alicia Marie, and I'm a professional costume artist and designer and improv performing artist. I'm working on a lot of cool things. So you can follow me on all the socials at Alicia Marie Body. And tonight, proving that you can't take the lawyer out of the law office. <laughs> I'm playing Feruza Armstrong. I can try, Alicia, I can try. <laughs> um, hello, I am Jen Crutchmer. You can find me on the interwebs as at DreamWisp or streaming on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. Um, I do a bunch of stuff can find out all about it over there. Um, tonight I am playing your friendly neighborhood troublemaker, Maeve Morgan Flynn. Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content coordinator over at Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me on Twitter as Oboe Lauren, where I'm often talking about Idle Champions or D&D and sometimes even Oboe things. Tonight I am playing Carolyn Stern, who's gonna go rat surfing. <laughs> no. <laughs> And hi, I'm Hope Lavelle. I, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the Hope Lavelle. I am a motion capture performer by day, and by night, I like to play some D&D. &D. And tonight, I am playing Miss Robin Beckett, who will support you when no one else will. <laughs> uh, and I am Deborah Ann Wool. I am the storyteller game master for this uh, particular adventure. Um, at the moment, you can come to San Diego and see me performing as Catherine and the Taming of the Shrew uh, at the Old Globe Theater. Um, so I, I am doing this from artist housing, so I apologize if my internet uh, is not uh, perfection today, but we will strive forward. Um, yes, fantastic. It'll be fun. So yes, thank you players so much for being here. Thank you everyone at home. Let's get comfortable and settle in for the 11th chapter of Children of Erte. So when we last left you, you had taken refuge in the sort of mouth of this mine as a snowstorm swept in and just like slowly covered the entrance to the cave in uh, you know thick packed snow. You took a long rest where you had a number of different uh, little adventures uh, in pairs or alone. One of which was Neb, our darling Neb, having a long conversation um, with a, a very uh, intelligent rat. Um, named Nicholas. 
uh, Nicholas invited you to a party. They were having a party of which the theme was rat, and uh, it was on the third level down uh, of the mine. So once everyone was up, you got into your spelunking and climbing gear, and uh, what do they call that? Um, repelled down the mine shaft that you had exploded <laughs> earlier today <laughs> to the third level. I think, believe Silas, you were in the lead, followed by Feruza. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the other three coming yeah. up behind. Uh, Silas mm -hmm. followed by Robin followed by, by Robin. Feruza. Sorry, Silas followed by Robin followed Ooh. by Feruza, with then mm -hmm. Neb and Maeve uh, up, at, you know, coming up uh, from the top. And uh, mm -hmm. as Silas and Robin and Feruza, you turn around your headlamps alight on a cave that goes off uh, from one side, the opposite side that you are repelling down. And the floor of this cave mouth is covered in undulating rats. They climb over one another. Uh, you can barely even see the floor for the mass of them. Um, there is a skittering <laughs> kind of noise of, of, of rat squeaks and, and claws, and they move almost as if in a little rhythm. It's a little rat rave going on down in this uh, cave. Halt! Everyone halt. Stop! Halt. stop. Yes. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> but right below us are about, I don't know, a thousand rats, and they're all making noises and we have nowhere to land, it looks like. Do you see what I'm seeing? Yes, so this? to that to that end, Feruza, there is still more shaft below you. Um, you oh. can, with your headlamps, see that there's probably one more level, but that is covered in the debris of the fallen mine elevator. Um, so this is the third. You look like there's probably even a fourth level down below you. So yeah, there's still a good 15 so feet until you- So Feruza, I, yes. I mean, I can't Ned see was talking to the rats and they said that a party was going on down here. I am just really, really curious what you were expecting. <laughs> on the Wait, okay, let me back up. Let me back up for a second. And Feruza just digs her heels in the yes. side of the, the wall. And she says, okay, hold on. Hold on. Here. I'm holding we on. Are, <laughs> as a group, we are repelling into the dark bowels of a cave to attend a party that we were invited to, according to Neb, by the rats that reside in said bowels of darkened cave. Am I right? I'm just making sure we are all living in the same reality here. She said that they have the mirror shard. Your voice echoes off the side of the walls of this, this cavern. Um, yes, and, and Silas is correct. The, the rats did say to Neb, okay who translated for you, that they at least know where it is. They can help you to it. Well, okay. to your great observation, there is no place to land. Um, Neb, do you think you can work your magic to part the Red Sea, as a matter of speaking? The Red Sea. <laughs> <laughs> I think or I've we could just seen... go to a different level and not go near the rats. <laughs> I think I've only seen gifts of that movie, but let me see what I can do. And I will, Does... Neb doesn't know how she talks to animals. Yes. She just looks at this mass of rats and thinks really hard about how much she would like to ask them to move out of the way and, and yells out, hi, we're here. We need a place to, to set down. <laughs> um, all of the rats sort of stop Neb, and you're a little bit above the others, but as you kind of peer down, again, your headlamps are the only light in the space that sort of illuminates the other side. They all stop and turn simultaneously to look at you. Their little noses and whiskers sort of twitching in the air. She's here, she's here, she's here, she's here. They're here, they're here, they're here. Echoes in your mind. The rest of you just hear sort of a scurrying, scratching squeak. Um, as they do, you see them sort of back up, creating a small ledge, uh, only about two feet wide for you to land on at the edge of this cave. And to do this, they've had to back up and crawl under and on top of each other, uh, kind of making the wall of rats a little bit taller than it was before. Um, I, Rosa, uh Silas, I know you, you went first. Sh should I go first? 
How are you going to get down here? That's an excellent question, Robin. <laughs> what do we do now? So yes, you are, you are all on this side of the wall. There is space <laughs> and then a ledge and the cave with the rats that you want to be in. So mm. you, you have to somehow cross this like so, 10 foot. So to be really clear, I don't mind stepping down if this is what we're going to do. The thing I don't want to happen is for Silas to step down and then everyone else go down to the other level and leave Silas on ah. level three. S Silas, I promise I am going to this rat party. So if you would like to join me, you can rat. be my plus one. Uh, okay. I, I mean, is is everyone on board with that? Because I will make it over there and I will, uh, you know, it's one small step for man, one I don't even know what how to finish this. For Silas? <laughs> yeah. Giant leap for Silas. Giant leap for rats. Uh, Nev, as you are talking, you hear more. Come dance with us. Come. Yep, we're coming. I mean, what what are they saying to you, Nev? Uh, well, first off, the music is amazing. Also, they're they're saying, "Come on down." Oh, the drop just happened. <laughs> Okay. What do we hear? Do we just hear like scratching? You just hear scratching and squeaking. <laughs> there is a little rhythm to it, though. It's eerie because okay. there's a little kind of pulse to it as it does. And every once in a while, like rat shine, the, the eye shine of the rats will kind of flash in the darkness or in your headlamps. Uh, further off in the darkness of the cave, it's like little twinkling stars as their eyes just catch a little bit of light. Uh, oh, okay. If we're okay. really doing this, I'm going to go down. Okay, okay, I'm right behind you. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Silas is trying to find find purchase on the All right. So Silas, um, is your idea to climb around the edge until you can get to the ledge kind of thing? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so to do this, you'll you'll still have the support of your equipment, so you won't fall necessarily. Uh, but you're still gonna have to basically rock climb around the side. Mm -hmm. So please give me a, an athletics check. Okay. Oh, that's good. Uh, let's see. So that's uh, that's an eighteen. An eighteen, yeah. So Silas, you start to find your purchases, these handholds, um, and there are some places where tools have been, you know, knocked into the rock, things like that, and you're able to find those and pull yourself across pretty gracefully. Those those sneakers are doing well for you. So um, uh, just to let everyone know, uh, people have been down here before. Uh, so that's probably good news. Um, possibly bad news. I don't hear any other people right now. Moose? But... Never mind. What is your obsession right. with moose? <laughs> it's a bad she moose. that experience. Bad moose. Important. Yeah. Uh, so yes, yeah, so Silas, you were able to pull yourself around and set your feet gently down on this ledge. As you do, a little bit of the edge of it, just a rock kind of knocks off and falls down, clattering. Uh, below you, it holds its ground, but it's it's not terribly stable. This little ledge. So I might weigh more than all of the rest of you, but I will say that I'm not sure that this is incredibly sturdy. So we might want to be careful when everybody is trying to establish a foothold. Well, might we want to then just go to the first floor below it? and see that first because we might just collapse this but and they're expecting us for this party and they i said we were early i promised silas that i wouldn't leave him alone and i'd like to try to follow his footsteps All right. across give me an advantaged athletics okay let's see what don't happens. drop her silas Okay, all right, all right, that's a 13. 13, okay. As you're going across, there's a couple of places where you slip a little bit, but your ropes hold on to you and you pull yourself back up. So you're okay, you won't take any damage, but your hands, little bits of scrapes and scraps. You've had some rough, rough hands. <laughs> My goodness. Oh. Uh, maybe a skinned knee in there too, you know, kind of thing. These are all just badges of honor, uh, <laughs> of adventuring honor. Um, so I yeah, will remember you, talking to rats after this. It'll be okay. Shall. It'll be okay. If you weren't going to remember it before the scratches on your knuckles, now you will. Mm -hmm. um, but see, so yeah, you're able to play yourself. It's not as graceful, um, but you make it around and join Silas. As you step 
onto this ledge, it does actually crack out below one of your feet, which goes down a little bit, but holding on to the wall and that other foot, you're able to kind of hold purchase. Um, the rats, however, upon seeing you arrive, swarm up around the, your foot that is still holding. Um, you can hear them chanting, come dance, meet Christine. Come dance, meet Christine. Come dance, meet Christine. Oh, yeah. I will look over at Silas and I'll say, well, I'm not that good of a singer, but they're singing to come dance and meet Christine. And, and who's Christine? I don't know. We're going to go meet them. Uh -oh. Hi, everybody. Who's Christine? Come meet, meet Christine. Uh, and Silas is going to yell up to everyone. Hey, seriously, it almost broke when Neb, and, and, and she's pretty little, landed down here so i don't know if this can support all of us at oh least no what's a tragedy <laughs> uh, i suppose we'll just have to go to a different floor then <laughs> i um, mean should we just stay hanging here then i mean Forever. what if neb and i explore and investigate and possibly meet christine hey can we ask the rats do they prefer rats or mice like i don't want to be offensive like what do they those are completely different animals. Are 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 they really? <laughs> yes. Robin I yells it down. Are they bigger <laughs> about your hand? <laughs> what are they doing with my hand? What did you yeah, say? No, no, the scale, the size. Yeah. yeah. They're probably so about what, the size a, of my foot, right? They're a yeah. mouse is just yeah. smaller than a rat. Yeah. But they're different they're animals. They're the other same mice are really face, quite tiny. Cutie face. Yeah. Okay, so these are rats, right? These are rats. Yeah. So why don't we ask the rats if they can bring Christine to us? I will look down at the rats. I'll try to look for Nicholas if I can, and I'll ask. Yes. The, the ledge is a bit unstable for everybody to come. Can you bring Christine to us, or is there a little more room that we can get inside? We're kind of big. Okay, let's start with a perception to see if you see Nicholas. Okay. Uh, I'd love you to roll that. I have a okay. plus five. <laughs> Okay, uh, peering around, I mean, these are, you know, to your eye, identical rats. They're probably all brothers and sisters and cousins and everything. So it's just very, very difficult to distinguish, um, you know, little traits. Um, now, Nicholas, when you met him, was a little bit larger than the others. He looked a little older, a little grayer, but in this kind of cacophony of rat dance, you know, you're having a really hard time picking out distinguishing features. Um, as you express this in rat and Silas hears you squeak at these creatures in some sort of pattern, um, they say, no, 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 she cannot come. She cannot come. You must come to her. Okay. How far away is she? Follow us. Follow us. Uh, and they all sort of turn, and even though it's, it's almost like they're kind of swarming over each other, but you do see like a general movement pushing back towards the back of the cave. Okay, I'm gonna look at Silas and say, we gotta go to her, but it looks like we're gonna uh, cha-cha all the way there. <laughs> uh, uh, Nothing so... with a cha-cha is fine. What dance would you like? I can, I can ask for a specific guys. dance. The only things that have cha-chas are, are proms and and weddings. And rat parties. Okay. And rat and parties. Rat parties. <laughs> well, you guys do the Macarena. It doesn't matter. Just tell me what we're supposed to do. We're hanging here at the side of a cave wall. I, or I, don't. It's your own. It's your own skin. I, I think I would normally say like we said, horror movie rules apply. We shouldn't split up, but I don't think this will hold everybody. So if you want to go down one more floor and at least get on solid ground, Silas, are that you okay? That sounds like with... a great plan. Okay. Uh, sure. That sounds like what's happening. So All sure. right. I like it. You guys go on with the rats and we will go down with the not rats. Okay. Uh, we don't. Do we have any way to communicate with each other while we're separate? Uh, yeah, like yell really loud and Silas uh, raises. <laughs> I was his thinking voice. more along the lines of: do, Does anyone have a like a walkie-talkie feature on their phone? Oh, does anybody have cans? You tie a string, and then we could like a really long string. Uh, um, it really was just gonna like. Oh, what did you say, Robin? Back at the camp. Oh. oh. All right. 
research. Any that would have ideas? to be a really long string too. Hmm. I, I think we're just yelling. Uh, we will try to not go too far and you don't go too far. And okay. Well, does, everyone word, though, right? does everyone have a watch? Does everyone have a watch? Uh, I I charged I up my phone? phone from Feruza's charger, so I got I got the time on that. Okay, perhaps we give ourselves one hour to meet back here. Okay, and oh if we gosh, don't, I hope this doesn't take you go out. the way that you didn't go and find us or you. I'm trying to keep track of the the floor of of where you're turning and how you're going because we all know that there are tunnels here all over. We, we knew there were the creatures that had the burrows. And I suppose getting lost is, uh, you know, getting like more lost than we already are. Yes. We don't make I don't want to spend my whole time. I lived in Atlanta and the only way I could get around was with navigation on the phone. And so I'm, I'm just being really transparent here and saying that I will have no chance of remembering where we you get. have a so piece like, of paper. Do, um, and you can write down I, I turned I type, here. I, type I turned the there. Um, I'll reach back into my pack and I'll pull out the, the same notebook that just right. has the one drawing on it, which happens to be a squirrel <laughs> that we've used for kindling, that we've used for other things. I'm going to go. I, I've got a I've got a mechanical pencil too, Silas. If you want to borrow it. Uh, are you going to let me borrow your notebook or? Well, yeah, both. Okay. And then you wow, can write down the direction. That's a lot of trust. I, I appreciate that. Well, I, I trust you to take the directions and I'll talk with the rats because I'm afraid if I'm <laughs> chatting with them, I might get distracted. Yeah, yeah, I you do that part. You do that part. I'm coming. And I will um, give him my notebook and my mechanical pencil. Also, so what's don't the code word? Jump though? as you dance. It sounds like the floor is unstable and we're going to be right under you. So, <laughs> oh, good, good point, good point. Yeah, do we actually have to dance? I don't like, know. I thought that was like a metaphor or something. No, I think they're actually dancing. I'm a horrible dancer, but I don't think they care. Okay. I mean, we'll find out. Okay. So, so I understand. Silas and Neb are going to walk into the sea of rats, following it further Ooh. into the cave, uh, looking for Christine. Um, <laughs> Maeve and Feruza and Robin are going to rappel down to the lowest level and yeah. start to explore down there. And you are all going to attempt to meet back at this location in an hour. Yes. And, yes. and chart, aye, aye. Chart, chart directions as we go through. And yes, chart directions uh, as you go. Uh, yeah. I will, uh, instead of using the clock on my phone, I'll use the, the little alarm setting to uh, alert us when it's been an hour. Because once okay. again, Neb's like, I'm going to get distracted by the grass. <laughs> one hour, make a really loud uh, alarm. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Stopwatch timer has been set. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So as Maeve, Feruza, and Robin, you continue to rappel down the side of the wall uh, onto the debris, the rubble of the mine elevator that fell down, you lose sight of Neb and Silas as they take their first steps into the sea of rats. We'll follow them a minute. Let's stick with the uh, the ladies on the bottom here. So Rob, Maeve, and Feruza, as you land on top of this, you know, debris pile, Robin, you knowing this equipment are able to sort of unhook everyone so that you have free movement and you can kind of tie that rope off so that it stays uh, where it's meant to be. Looking down this section of cave, you can see that it very quickly, this one also, um, it goes a little bit out in front of you and a little bit behind you. Um, it very quickly gets quite small and starts to branch off in a couple of different directions. Can we fit in there, do you think? Okay. It's not, okay. It's tight, but you can. Where do you guys wanna go, forward or back? So that's all ahead of us, right? It, it's how many branches does it go into? Behind you, you see sort of a, a a small sort of chamber. It looks like there might be one that goes off to the left and another one that maybe even goes up a little bit to the right. In front of you, there's a longer chamber. There's a good sort of space uh, in front of you and even some tracks that head out that way. You can see underneath the rubble and debris, some of these little cart tracks that go forward, but they very quickly kind of seem to disappear under more rock and debris. And again, maybe three different paths that you can see fairly clearly in front of you. Again, one that goes down, one that kind of goes up, and another maybe that's sort of more flat. Well, I mean, 
If we stay underneath Neb and Silas, maybe we'll meet up at some point. I don't know. I don't want to go in the opposite direction of them. I'm just thinking, uh, if there are tracks here, that'll perhaps lead us to wherever something might have been. But that's where people were, hmm. right? Oh, that's true. Well, we have an hour. As long as we don't get lost, we can make it back here. This is a horrible decision, but, you know, we've made many this so far, so... <laughs> Um, um, I don't know if we should stand here for an hour. You do know we want I mean? to set a timer for every 15 minutes so we check and if we need to turn back, if we're far enough in, we can have enough time to get back here? Sounds great. That sounds good. Okay. Um, okay. Gonna snooze. Looking, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looking around, are there any other, um, like, is there any place where the, the texture of the rock is different, the colors of the rocks, um, or where there are, are there any markings or tools? I, I mean, obviously the elevator yeah. came down and smashed, yeah. but, but the elevator should have in theory had a path there. So we shouldn't have smashed too much, mm. hopefully. So give me a perception check, please. Okay. I'm not that good at this. Uh, 18. 18. So as you're looking around at this tunnel entrance, um, you do see some distinct differences between some rock that looks <clears throat> maybe like it has some moss growing on it, things like that, some natural oxidation, and other rock that looks fresh. And it's starting to dawn on you that the crash of the mine elevator may have dislodged a lot of other loose rock and particles um, so that what you've sort of seen down here is some extra destruction from that kind of impact. Um, as you look forward and kind of following these train tracks, the, the mine cart tracks as they go in, you can see that they seem to be pretty level and just where the stone and dusk and rock have kind of fallen on top it almost looks like they're tilting down just a bit. Uh, we should be careful, you guys. If we, if you notice or hear any rock crumbling, we don't want to be buried down here with these rats. True. <laughs> um. What are you thinking, Robin? You have a look of consternation on your face. Robin wants, Robin is going to step forward into this forward just a uh -huh. bit to feel and look and see if there's cracks or any sort of unstableness in yeah. sight. What a nature check, either nature or history. If you're looking for structure or you're looking for like rock. I think she'd be looking for like, from her knowledge of what is structured. Okay, great. And, Let's and go history don't. check. Oh, great. That's I'll a seven. You. It's a seven. Um, so yeah, I mean, you had this friend, right, who told you a lot about mining. Uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. he was he was not a very uh, strong structural engineer himself. Uh, so his information was a bit unreliable. <laughs> and as you're looking, you see some of this like cross bracing. So you can see mm -hmm. some evidence that there used to be um, posts that went uh, vertical and lintels that went horizontal. Um, but now either they're gone or they've been grown over. You're, you're, you're missing some of that structural support. Oh, oh no. I mean, if these are mining caves, you need the structure. I, I, I don't know about this, you guys. They look weak to you? I mean, it's just lacking the structure you would see in a proper mining cave, at least to my knowledge of what I've seen in, you know, movies and books. And we, you, they didn't tell us anything about this part of the trip, right? What we would be looking for down here. They just told you that you'd be caving and exploring an old mine. So it might be safe if tour guides come down here, but uh, I'm going to examine the other side real quick. Okay. Uh, as you come back around to the other side, uh, just give me a regular sort of perception check to start. Come on. <laughs> it's a four. <laughs> it's a four. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, you see like, it looks like there's an opening that goes down to the left and it looks like there's an opening that goes up to the right, but 
gosh, you wouldn't have any idea what it might mean or lead to or. Uh, I'm out of my depths here, you guys. Well, ladies, uh, nothing ventured, right? All right, so let's look and see just sort of what's ahead with the cart, maybe, because that seems like if we can see where that goes, we might have it at end there. Sure. But that Great seems idea. like where people have gone before. We, we never have there don't are to tools, go. perhaps there's information yeah. about it, perhaps there's a guidebook um, or signs of, of past visitors. Very good. We can always turn them back. <laughs> oh gosh, I just jinxed it. I, I, I know. Oh, I was like, maybe we should just not talk. I mean, do we want? And the DM laughs. <laughs> oh no. Oh Sorry. no. Um, <laughs> no. Okay, let's, can. let's, let's go. Turn. I mean, is it? Yeah. This is a labyrinth, right? Yeah. I, I'm thinking of the, the Greek myths. Do we want to like tie a string to where we are and just sort of have it there in case we need to come back? I have dental floss. So. Oh, perfect. Dental floss. <laughs> 200 yards. Out of that. <laughs> That'll you get us buy about it once every feet. three years, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. And she's reaching into her bag. I have yarn. <gasps> oh, even better. We'll see how, how long it gets us. It's a brand new spool. I hadn't broken into it yet. Okay. What color is it? Just out of curiosity. It's, it's rain boots yellow. Ooh, beautiful. Okay. All right. So, uh, sorry, I you say what, what you're going to tie it's it to. It's quite, on quite accurate to the myth, isn't it? <laughs> Golden <laughs> thread. Yeah. Oh, little thread. Cool. Um, I think we're just, are we just going to lay it on the ground as we go? Do yeah. We, like we need to tie it to anything? It's not going to go anywhere, I don't think. Well, maybe, God, what? <laughs> maybe tie it to our, where our gear is. Okay. Okay. Because that's okay. anchored. Yeah, so tie it, gives it to us the rope. Not, not that a, okay. A, a, okay. A, a yarn is going to necessarily hold us if we collapse. But then we're in trouble anyway, so adventures. So, yeah, so Robin, as you walk, just sort of unspooling this ball of yarn as you move Ooh. forward. Uh, it'll just sort of follow you around, Robin. All right, so as you all take your first sort of tentative steps, tentative steps forward into this cave, um, up ahead as you get closer, you can really quite easily see that the path to the left that goes down is really, it's a drop. It's, it's just sort of like a little hole into the earth off to the left. To the right, what you thought was a path that was kind of going up is really just up onto a ledge where you then don't see much of an outlet. However, where this track disappears, you can now much clearly make out, much more clearly make out a, a cave-in, a bunch of stones that have fallen, large boulders that have sort of blocked the path of this cart as it was going, you know, the cart track uh, that was going forward. Okay. Um, how high up is the ledge? From where we are from here probably five feet and it's just it's just a drop off like we kind of to the work. to the left of you is a drop off into sort okay. of darkness it's a it's a it's narrow it's maybe about 12 feet wide and maybe okay. four feet long but it's just like a fissure in the ground on the side that just kind of oh, disappears okay. Okay. Then okay. off to the right, up five feet, you see just this little ledge with a, you know, sort of a pocket of space up by the ceiling. Hmm. So looking at the cave-in, yeah. how, it, it's big stones. Yes. And is there any, is there anything else in that rubble that we can see? Investigation, please. Sure. Eleven. Upon closer examination, you see flecks of gold mm. in the stone. What is it, Maeve? Didn't they say all the gold disappeared? Well, the rock has unearthed seen some more if it's fallen. It's fresh rock. Is this this is fresh rock or this is old rock? I mean, this is rock that has fallen recently. This is recent. Okay, so this looks like it might have been us, potentially. Yes, potentially this was caused by you, yes. <laughs> okay, so this was not... Hmm. Interesting. I just like how Maeve said us. 
<laughs> I'm not going to take the sole blame for anything. <laughs> you all wanted to get down here too. Don't act like you didn't. Um, yeah. <laughs> so there's still gold in and the then wall. Hills. And then there are hills. And then there are uh, walls. Hills. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. How deep did that cave in go? Like, is that, was it from really deep or was it really shallow? Like they just flooded this This is pretty this shallow. You're with... only like, at this point where this cave in is that, that you caused, you're only 10 feet in. So they just must have flooded it or something with the cyanide. So I'll go back to so just sort of clear up what how this works. So essentially they yeah. go in, they mine out the gold. They get, because the gold is interlined and mixed in with the rock. So right. they go and they take out the pieces of rock that have gold in it, mm -hmm. take it to the surface, break it up, crush it into smaller pieces, then use the cyanide outside on that field to sort of separate the natural right. material from the gold yep. material. So anything mm -hmm. down here would not yet have been treated with any kind of cyanide. It's like untreated. Um, okay, no, I, I mean, my working yeah. theory of what happened was yeah. they literally like flooded the mine with some sort of solution I see. that okay. purified the I gold. See. You're and working on a theory, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, it, gotcha. It's probably Go completely inaccurate because- No, you go for it. I'm just making sure I wasn't my miss- uh, Okay, no, 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 sorry. This okay, was good. all me <laughs> you got making, it. Up, making up ideas that are you got probably it. way off. Okay, um, well, so that part is a lie. Someone was lying. Or someone was poorly informed. Interesting. Huh. So, which way do we go? Well, the, the ledge, ledge isn't the... far. We could probably just, like, jump up on that. Yeah, let's try the ledge. Okay. 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 Uh, so yeah, who wants to climb up on the ledge and see? I mean, Faruza, oh, you're six feet tall, so you can already yeah. just sort of see over it, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so Faruza, you'll walk over and look over there. As you look up there, you can actually see there's a little placard on the wall and a bunch of little uh, sort of uh, um, uh, mining equipment and a little straw cot, a little like straw bed. Um, and on the placard, it just says, you know, uh, a lot of mining camps, uh, you know, or, or mine, you know, mines uh, would have little spots for workers to take a break, uh, yeah. you know, off on the side. These are some examples of the tools and the types of things that they would have down here. Um, and it even, you know, it has a little number on it as though like maybe there was a guidebook that would go along with this. Oh, so Fruz is going to tell uh, Robin and Maeve what she sees. We don't see like a skeleton or anything there, nope, do we? Nothing, nothing like, like that. that. It looks like a little museum set. Wow. That's Someone sad. set this up as an example of what it might be like. That's great news. Oh. It means we're on a very distinguished path and they would take tours through here. So it's, it's got okay. to be safe. Yeah, I agree. Right? It has to be safe. Um, Could you grab perhaps some of those tools? They might be... Certainly. Can Maybe I, there's equipment there. You Maybe can. There's... You feel a little strange about it because it is like, you know, like, don't touch the exhibit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they didn't explicitly say that. <laughs> there's a little instinct in, in the lawyer. There's a little velvet rope around yeah. the rock. Yeah. <laughs> Who um, waits behind velvet ropes? I don't. So there is, there is a, a small lantern, um, okay. uh, like a pickaxe, a bunch of pitons, um, okay. a bucket, um, and then again, like this little sort of straw bed with kind of a, a, a woven blanket around it. And everything is visible. It isn't like there's a dark corner anywhere up there. With your headlamp, you can kind of light all of that up. Look around. Do you just check under the mattress? Why don't I do that? And <laughs> that's that's gonna the main thing, <laughs> checking check in under the mattresses. <laughs> Gotta keep that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Um, Fruz is going to take out of her pocket um, a familiar glowing thing and place <laughs> it up there. <laughs> place it up. So, um, a green glowing ring to see better. And she's going to, can I, can Fruz reach and lift up the, yeah, you should the mattress? It. Okay. It's a very deep ledge. Yeah. Is that the first mean, thing? You, you might of... have to kind of, as you kind of get like, look down, you can see there's even like a little ledge that you can put a foot on to like get an extra foot or two higher up here in. Okay. That's what she does. Um, so yeah, uh, you lift up this mat and underneath you see a whole bunch of bugs. 
just crawling in and around itself as if it had been eating into the straw, the moist, wet straw underneath there. And there's just this little cockney, a bunch of little like uh, centipedes and millipedes and worm-like creatures Ew. all sort of swarming okay. around them. Sorry, you guys. It's just there's a lot of creepy crawlies down here. They were the rats that Neb introduced us to. We're not kidding. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything under here, but just more grimy little things. Can you can you grab the blanket for me? Yes. Great. Cruz is gonna like pull the blanket, reach over and like grab the blanket. Oh my god, it smells lovely, Robin. And just sort of <laughs> toss it down. As you do, a couple of little centipedes fall off of it oh. onto the ground. They slither around and seem to be heading up. They're going they're not rats. They're gonna go crash the rat party. <laughs> oh, oh, well, oh, by all means. All right, that looks like everything up here. Is, is the placard removable or is it attached? It is like like um, you know, nailed is maybe the word, but it, it's a, it's you know secured to the wall. Okay. Hmm. Is there anything up here? Um, the sign, the sign is just the little, you said a little placard, it's just yeah, sort of sitting there. It's attached to the wall. It's been, you oh. know, nailed or, you know, secured into the wall. Yeah, like so it's wall. bolted in. Bolted, yeah, like bolted. Okay. Bolted in. Yeah, the sign's bolted in. So I'm just, what do you I think? Just, I'm trying to think of anywhere that they could break or I'm thinking mirror. Yeah, it's a thought. It's I'm going to think everything is the thing we want because I just want to find it and get the heck out of here. <laughs> Same. I think we just is there. Is there? It. Can you use one of the one of the pitons or something to pry open the pry it out of the wall? Pry it off. We can try. I mean, all right, Frieza. You want to give me an athletic or a, a, a strength or an athletics strength check for me, please? Okay. Just make sure yeah. you use some some leverage on there. I, I'm I actually I'm no no help with strength. But. No help at all. Yeah, <laughs> I can give it's her actually, points of, of yeah. to use. To, okay, to well, how about your leverage, intelligence? But, What's your intelligence base? Uh, my modifying? intelligence is plus one. Plus one. Okay, I rolled a six, and that's what you guys are waiting for. <laughs> plus one is a seven. So as you go, part of the trouble is that. This placard looks old and it looks like it's really like been set into the rock that whatever sort of, you know, adjustments and erosion and everything, it's it's almost like the rock is gripping it and you're having trouble even just getting the piton edge yeah. around the back of the placard to really pry it off. It's in there strong. Um, yeah. Why don't we hold there for a moment? We'll let you consider I wonder what, what everyone next else is up to. We're going to go, it, it went yeah. 15 <laughs> minutes. You press the snooze. <laughs> and uh, we'll come back to you in just a minute to see what you want to do. So, Neb and Silas, your first steps take you inside the sort of mouth of this cave. As you do, it crumbles again, that ledge a little bit behind you. Um, the rats immediately swarm all around your legs and feet. Your sneakers, you can't even see them, Silas. Neb, uh, you know, it's up to your knees almost, this sort of wave of rats. Um, you feel the little hairs, you the warmth of their bodies, the little scratch of their nails as the pulse sort of rings. Hey, 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 not the pants, not the pants. <laughs> they love your pants, Silas. They shiny shiny pants uh, that sort of, you know, they can feel the warmth of your bodies. And there is this just feeling as you begin to kind of step forward. Silas, they're definitely a fan of your pants. <laughs> Do we get the impression uh, with our climbing gear on and with the ropes attached, like, I, I assume we're going to have to un um, unattach yeah. the ropes. You probably to, are, to keep yes. going further. So... All right, Neb, uh, you want me to unattach you here? And Silas just tries to, you know, help um, unattach all the things. And can, can you get that one? Like, I can't, you know, and, oh, yeah, and yeah. We, we get all that, <laughs> uh, you know, take, taken care of. And um, then Silas is going to uh, try to move carefully, try not to step on rats for whatever reason. He doesn't want to step on them. Um, and he's going to kind of um, attach 
the ropes to something if he can find it. Like if there's a heavy rock or something, he's going to like put it under the rope or whatever. He mainly does not want them getting pulled out off of the thing where we cannot retrieve them easily. All right. Like Investigation. Idea. Uh, that that is a really really good idea. Let me let me help you with that. And okay. I will I will help him, and then by both just helping pin everything down and gently making sure rats are not under him <laughs> while he's doing he's it. Sort of sliding your feet instead of picking them up. So that, yeah, and just yeah. like gently, like oh, hold on a second, we just got to take care of this. <laughs> so w what can I add to that? Oh, uh, if you want to add um, with that helping. Um, Hmm. That feels like a dexterity. Oh. Like you're you're helping uh, clear that path for him. So what is your dexterity then? That that's a negative one. I was. Oh, that's a negative one. For, okay. What would you for, like a, for? Either like a charisma because I'm a helping charisma. persuade the rest. Okay, because you're talking to him. Sure. Yeah. What's your charisma? Face? That's a plus two. A plus two. Okay, so uh, that's a plus six. Will you roll that nice for me? DM. Deb. A plus six. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Okay. So Silas. As sort of Neb coaxes, you know, again, making creepy little squeaky noises, they, they, they do seem, oh my God, perfect. <laughs> Might have been uh, they they do seem to <laughs> part away a little bit as, as you're able to kind of get yourself closer to the wall, which is a good thing you did because just around the ledges, you're sort of ex examining, you see an old rusty piton slam into a crack in that wall. As you grab it and sort of jiggle it, it is strong and firm and you can pull those ropes around the other side and it should hold them there really quite, you know, safely. All right, I do that. And then I gingerly try not to step on rats, move, start to move forward. All right, Nev, you going with him? Oh yes, oh yes. Okay. At this point, seeing that we're ready, I'll, I'll give Silas a thumbs up and then look down at the entire mass of rats and say, okay, we're ready to go, lead on. Yay! And uh, they all sort of, you know, get excited and you can feel them moving faster as you sort of wade through this pool of rats. As you look behind you now, it's just they've all surrounded you. A couple of them start to crawl up your legs onto your pants. They're still not, they're not attacking or anything like that. They just are like wanting to be near you, climbing uh, up your body. Hey, 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 not without consent here. I mean, Neb, can we like yeah, scale yeah, yeah. them back a bit or? I'm one of the ones that's crawling up my leg. I will yes. hold out hands as though to invite it onto my hands. Okay. Them, and then, oh, it will happily crawl onto your hand. And then I'll let them perch on my shoulder and say, um, so my friend Silas can't talk with anybody. Uh, and so he's having a harder time. Could you, could you ask everybody to kind of give him a little bit of space? Because like, I can just ask you if this is okay. Oh, sorry. Give me a you. persuasion. <laughs> sure. Since you're talking to them. <sighs> that is a nine. That is a nine. Not my best. Okay. So um, Silas, they don't seem to be abating. And, and even Neb, as you look at the one on your shoulder, it's listening, but it's just kind of, yeah. Oh, it's just so, sort of lost in this trance of the trance of the pulse of the party. Uh, Silas, we're in the middle of a rave. Yeah. And okay. I, I think we're just, I think we're just going go to have to join in. Don't go in the mosh pit if you can't handle it. All right. L listen, like one, one other question that is just now occurring to me. Do we even know if Christine is a rat? Like, do we know what Christine is? Like, no. is it a person? No, but... I'm assuming a rat because only rats and us are invited to the party, but there's only one way to find out. And I will continue on forward. Right. You move down, this path turns a little bit. Uh, you can feel, I mean, you're, you're now probably a good 20, 30 feet away from the elevator shaft. Um, as you get over there, it gets like warmer. All of these rat bodies in your own, it's sort of a, a, a hot box, sort of back area. It's like um, a sauna. Now, here. as you shine your light around, you can see the little bodies of, of insects and other mammals that are being sort of eaten um, by the rats. There's sort of a whole sort of 
you know, area buffet laid out of little things to eat. And the rats come up and grab a little bit and go away. There's garbage. Um, you even see like the wrapper of some of the granola bars that, you know, you, you recognize from the train. All of these kind of things sort of lined up along the side. But again, the main flow, and it's starting to get more narrow. You know, what was about 10 feet wide now is closer to six feet, five feet wide, um, as it sort of begins to funnel you forward. And you can feel now the pressure of the rat bodies behind you, pushing you further and further into this cave. As you turn this final corner, losing the shaft behind you from sight, you see Nicholas. He's standing on a ledge at the back of this cavern. And he looks at you, and a little rat smile comes across his face. Hi, Nicholas. Welcome, he says. Um, so glad you could make it. Me too. Christine. And he points down. And as the lights from your headlights, hand lamps descend down, you see the largest freaking rat you have ever seen in your life. She's a good three feet long, a uh, foot in diameter. Um, she looks pregnant. She looks big bellied, full. She has dozens of little nipples up and down her belly um, as different small little baby rats come and feed from her. Uh, her face is elongated and pointed as she looks at you and smiles. Welcome to the party, she says. I look over at Silas and say, well, now now I completely understand why we had to come to her. This is, of course, and I will. Wait, wait is that Christina? Yeah, yeah. The big one, the pregnant one, absolutely. And I'll turn back to Christine. That's not natural. <laughs> it's a baby shower. <laughs> it's a baby shower. Um, a rat themed baby shower. I'm gonna- For rat babies. Exactly. Rat babies. The baby shower is a human shower. <laughs> 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 It's just a constant party. When you asked me that last time, I was like, what is the thing? I guess it's rats. Yeah. <laughs> New rats. Yay. New rats. The <laughs> ratlings. Oh, I what forgot. What, what are baby rats called? And we'll find out. Thank you. Oh, they have like a real, yeah, I guess they would have a real name. Yeah. I didn't look that up. I'm going to talk to Christine, but for yes. the sake of the narrative, I'm going to try to also, Neb will translate for uh -huh. Silas uh -huh. uh, everything that I'm saying okay. and she's saying. So okay. I do want to make it clear also, Pups uh, or pinkies. Deb, if, if you didn't see, uh, so Silas was drawing in the notebook yes. as we were, were going along. Yes. Here, so so just, far, I you have not seen any branching. So far, okay. it has been one path. Got um, it. But yes, you, you can have marked landmarks and things like Got that. It. Ah, uh, hi, it's very nice to meet you. Everybody has said that we should come and meet you. Welcome. The time is nigh. You were early, but now it's coming. Uh, yeah, sorry if we bothered you earlier. Um, what, what time is that? Is it just time for the party or something else? They are coming. I feel it. Who's they? <laughs> the young. Oh, you're you're about to give birth, you mean? I tall one. That is something no one has ever called me. Uh, <laughs> and I've been translating for Silas, but then I'll turn back to Silas and say, oh, I should I should offer I should probably offer something and I'm going to find one of the good berries I have left yes. <laughs> and we don't have much to offer, but, um, ha happy rat shower. And I will offer her a good berry. <laughs> um, as you reach forward, I mean, she's huge, right? I mean, her head is the size of your hand as you reach forward and her nose just sort of her snout rests on your fingertips and her tongue reaches out and sort of grabs the good berry out of your hand into her mouth. She smacks her teeth together. Mm, wonderful. Oh, that will help. Thank you. 
she My sort of rolls over as she does dozens of rats that were on her body or feeding from her tumble off of her body as she writes herself um, and begins to convulse and push as she begins to give birth to her pups. Uh, All of the rats squeaking <laughs> amplifies. As Neb is distracted, Silas already has hand sanitizer out and has like squirting <laughs> it in her hand. The pups are adorable. They're the cutest, tiniest little things. Um, but there are dozens of them. Um, and yeah. Neb is having way more fun than Lauren. Uh, Neb will quickly look up at Nicholas and say, I, are we just witnessing? Are we supposed to do something? I know nothing about helping give birth to uh, anyone. She knows what to do. Okay, you good. Celebrate. Yay. Uh, New life. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Oh, and okay. as he does, he says, look quickly beneath the Christine. I'll quickly relay all that to Silas as he's squirting hand sanitizer and be like, okay, good news. We're just here to celebrate. We're not here to do anything. I'll take a look. As you look, um, just with your headlamps, it's hard to see because her body is so huge and she's moving over. But on her nest, where she's made her nest in the stone, you think you see carvings sort of underneath where she is lying. Um, carvings like some... Someone has made a marking into the stone, or give me an investigation. Okay. N now, what are you doing? <laughs> As you start yeah. to look, <laughs> just yeah. get closer to the. I'm going the laboring, mama. Rat. Yeah, I'll I'll try to still keep a respectful distance mm -hmm. uh, because I don't want to help give birth because I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, Silas, <laughs> come celebrate over here, and I'll point out the. Mm -hmm. Are there some carvings here or something? Oh. I'm not sure. I was gonna I was gonna ask you to ask them where the mirror was. Uh I think that's an after we celebrate question, but I, I will definitely do that. <laughs> oh, I, I'm I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. I don't know <laughs> if that was rude. I just feel like that would be I don't know. I don't think you're you're rude. It's fine. I'm just curious. <laughs> uh Neb got an eighteen. An eighteen. They look like letters, like English letters. Um, I'll look back up at Nicholas and say, is, uh, is Christine, is this like a special place that she needs to give birth? Yes, this is where he left the messages. What messages? There are the messages all throughout the caves. And as I'm translating for Silas. H who left messages? Yeah, who left them? Oh, no one knows, but we honor him. Do you honor him by giving birth on the signs? Yes. I mean, new life. That's 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 a pretty interesting. Okay, yeah, I like that. That makes sense. Silas uh, gets a little more forward at this point and is mm -hmm. like going to get closer and try to read what is on the symbols. And if she is giving birth, yes. that's totally fine. Yes. He's going to be real soft about it, but he's going to move her or whatever. You try to move her? Yes. Like just, you know, gently. Not I'm not like, yes. you know, slinging her or anything, but, gotcha. but you know, yeah. Um Silas, animal handling to start. Okay. Uh I I'll try to help by uh Silas just wants to see if he can help and make sure everything's going okay. He probably knows way more hey, about hey, tell them, birth than I tell do. Tell them saying the symbols out loud is going to bless the birth. Oh, uh, he thinks saying the symbols out loud could help bless this birth. Tell them that I know the secret language and I am a high priest of the mysterious one who left these cards. <laughs> And to Silas, well, I, that's where I'm going to stop. Yeah. To Silas, yeah. I'm going to be like, um, I don't, what? Yeah, I'm just saying, we need to read what these are. Trust me, Ab it'll be fine. Absolutely, absolutely. But, uh, okay. And I'll turn back and say, um, he, he thinks reading them out loud because he's a, a priest of the guy who wrote the, the, the notes. Deception. I mean, am I helping her here? Though, um, with the content? 
I mean, I was going to have her charisma help your animal handling. Okay. Um, she's the one making the lie. Um, let's see. What could you... What is your charisma base? Uh, four. Four. Okay. We will add his charisma base. It's his idea that you will then... You can help with her inflection and things like that. Although in rat, you might not know. <laughs> no, it's... <laughs> it's right. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you want me to roll a deception? You roll a deception, or... and okay. we'll add his plus four. Okay. Oh! <gasps> <gasps> That's a natural 20. So I got 22 plus his four. There's a 26. All right. I, so. Neb has learned something today, which is she can lie if someone else feeds wow. her the lines. There you go. Ah. She just can't come up with the lie herself. So watch so, your with great um, interest. As you say that, everything just silence all of that squeaking and scratching goes completely silent all you hear is christine <laughs> and she looks at you her eyes widen you know the mysterious one she puts her hands out her her hands her front paws out towards you <laughs> she says help me I'll come up and help guide her, move her gently as possible. Uh, Neb, so that, because I've already said that Silas needs to read the stuff, so. So Neb and Silas, you move forward and sort of place your hands below this giant <laughs> rat woman. And as you move female He looks rat, at the hand sanitizer and just throws yeah. it over his shoulder. It immediately disappears into the rats and bugs sea. Oh, don't eat that! <laughs> you slide her along the ledge. She looks up at you, her eyes glazed. Honor to thee. She says as she looks at you, Silas. Um, I don't know and, what you're saying, but you're really cute. Yeah. She, she's, she, says, she says, she says honor to you. <laughs> uh, yeah, honor back. As you slide her away, you see that there are indeed a number of English characters carved into the stone. Josh, can we pull up level three? I will read this aloud as well as put it in the chat for you. Okay. Hold on. And I'm in the party chat, not the game okay. chat. Sorry. And I am assuming. Well, it is a rat party. Absolutely. It is a rat party. I'm rat assuming party. Neb is going to stay with Christine. Okay. Try to help keep her comfortable as much as as much as oh. she knows how to, and assume that because of the deception, Silas is going to read this out. Gotcha. So it says K D M K X Z K I Z H G G X N P A I. So Silas is frantically at this point. So first of all, he does. Now, how, how big of an area? Um, um, I mean, it's this ledge is probably like, I mean, she's three feet long. So probably the ledge all, goes all the way across the full five, six feet of this, the end okay. of this cave. So um, I, yeah, Silas is just going to, you know, as quickly as he can, like get an angle where he can uh, turn and he turns the flash on the phone and yep. takes a picture yep. on the phone. But then he also, and he's like moving quick. He pulls the notebook out and yep. he is like, um, and he is taking careful care. Silas um, is and uh, does a lot of comic book art yes. in his uh, background. And so he is taking very special care to make sure the characters are represented identically to, Pretty to, close. to what he sees. You got them. it. Yeah. You have a like picture. The serifs in the are... right place and all that. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. And then and Silas is just going to read those out loud, and he's going to do it, you know, very dramatically. K they, they all look, yes, at all of you. They say, what does it mean? Tell I us, tell us. I did not oh, know. prophet of the old one, of the mysterious one. Tell us, tell us. I think uh, it's in code. I, <laughs> Neb, Neb, tell them that it demands that they lead us to the mirror and their entire tribe will see blessings for centuries. <laughs> Silas. Neville look uh, over no, really, at- really okay. <laughs> Neville look over at Nicholas. Yes. 
Uh, sorry, this, this is Lauren having a moment. Neb <laughs> yeah. asked her to do something. Neb's going to do it. Uh, <laughs> Neb will look up at Nicholas and with her newfound powers of deception, yes. she's going to say, um, so it looks like you were right. We're supposed to be here. And th this is an indication that we're supposed to get that mirror shard. And yeah, this is, this is a blessing. Wonderful. Give me a deception. You can add Silas's plus four. Okay. Today is the day that Neb learns to love. Okay. <laughs> I rolled a 19, oh 19 with his plus four. That's 23. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, so yeah, Nicholas almost, I mean, he faints off of the higher ledge that he's on and sort of I will falls rush up and grazed over the letters and just like rubs his face and body along all of the letters. All of the other little rats, the new pups, they're all sort of putting the new pups up on top of these letters, hoping that they will be blessed uh, in this moment. Christine looks at you, her eyes glassy and teary as well as Nicholas. And she turns to Nick, she's Nicholas. Thank you for bringing this blessing to my purse. Uh, Nicholas just bows to her. Yes, of course. Um, we are so lucky to have you as our queen. Um, and they just seem to be falling over each other in love. Uh, the party picks up uh, more rat dancing all around you now, whether you like it or not, Silas, they are climbing up all it's over okay. you. They're Silas jumping off your shoulders and crowd surfing on their own brethren. Um, it is like off the the hook now. The roof is <laughs> on fire <laughs> um, uh, of this party um, as they all feel the blessing of the mysterious one. This looks like so much fun. And these <laughs> rats are having such a great time. And Neb is totally enjoying, despite the fact that she had to lie to them, that they've been made so happy. They have been. And she kind of wishes she knew what it was like to be one of them. Mm. Mm. And is really thinking about like, oh, these the giant rats. This has got to be special. This has got to be magical. I wonder if it'd be easier if I could just be one of them. And what happens? Uh, Silas, you look away. When you look back, Neb is gone. <laughs> Neb? <laughs> Neb? Neb, all you see around you are rats. Suddenly, they are huge. You are surrounded by rats that are the size of yourself, uh, it's almost as if they've grown instantly to surround you and you feel yourself sinking down in the sea of rats, looking around you, seeing them all there. As you look down at your own body and hands, only to see tiny little paws, little gray hairs all over your body. Everything seems to move a little bit differently. And as you speak, the squeaks of rat come out of your mouth. There's a moment of panic of course because but then it very quickly turns to this is amazing <laughs> what did you do with neb I... silas is now spinning in circles you can see his legs just off to the side of you all of the rats clinging to them as he starts to spin flinging them right and left oh oh um um uh, i gotta tell silas oh he's gonna i'm gonna try to crawl up top and wave <laughs> ah what did you do with her? A rat climbs up towards your shoulder, I suppose, and starts doing this, starts You're waving their me. hands what? back and forth. Oh, and he flings you. Yes. Oh, no. Or, so oh, was, yes, actually. Give me a, uh, like, a melee attack. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, my God. Uh, that's a 13. What is your AC as a rat? Uh, 10. 10. All right. You fly across the room, Nev. Let's see uh, where you land. Oh no, um, you hit a wall. Ooh, and take four points of damage, bludgeoning damage, as you hit the wall and fall back into the pool of rats. And as I fall back into the pool of rats, actually as she hits the wall, yes. it's suddenly it's Neb, the human version of her, as rats only have one hit point. And then she hits the ground kind of face first and that's how the rest of that damage gets done across and then she's like ah oh, ah oh. neb neb what what did they do to you what, what where did you go 
I was a rat, didn't you see? I was waving. It was amazing. <laughs> I mean, until you flung me across. The, well, I, I, I guess you didn't that know. That was you. That was me. You turned into a rat. Yeah. You didn't tell me you could do that. I didn't know I could do that. Ow! Don't do that to me again, though. That I, hurt. I, listen, honestly, I did not. I, I, I thought they had like murdered you or like eaten you really quick while I turned my head. I had no idea what was going on. I, I didn't either. I was just thinking how much fun it would be involved in the party without being me. And then I was a rat. I'm so sorry. And then it, Silas is. Uh, did did Neb take any actual damage? Yeah, three came okay. through to her, so she's uh, got like a goose. Si Silas just says, I am so sorry. I had no idea that was you. And um, listen, um, you can turn into a rat now, and I'm sure that's going to help us. Do you think you could turn into other things? And as this happens, he's just kind of idly twirling his finger and mm -hmm. uh, healing word. And uh, oh. that's going to heal. Um, that's uh, six points of damage. Right. So Ooh. Nice. way we more than I need. Oh. Pause there with you two and head back down to the cave <laughs> with Faruza, Maid, and Robin. You just witnessed a rat birth. <laughs> Whoa. In more you than have no idea the extraordinary life-giving uh, experiences happening upstairs. The miracle of life. Have raided a museum exhibit and uh, are uh, trying to determine what you would like to do next. Um, I, I hope they're faring okay up there, you know? Well, we've just lost 15 minutes. We need to keep going. Okay, uh, really quick before we go. Um, Bruza just wants to make sure that she's read everything on the placard, make sure mm -hmm. what we mm -hmm. see, like she sort of gets her sleeve and can like reach and Probably like rub clean. it just to make okay. sure that, yeah, if there's anything on there. She's, what does it say? Does it matter? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it doesn't, the specifics of it, are, are not strictly important, but yes, that it okay. names the objects and the items up there. It says that this would okay. have been the type of little cubby that they would have made for themselves uh, for a break. Um, and yeah. that these are some examples of some tools that they would have used. Okay. Yeah, that's all we have up here. It just looks like a museum installation. We probably would have saw it if we had come down here with the actual trip that we were supposed to be on. Okay. <sighs> well, what do you think, Maeve? Do we keep going? I think. That's probably what we have to do. All right, and then Robin is going to lead the charge, kind of unspooling her yarn okay. and going mm -hmm. down this way. So, yeah, so this way, I mean, this is where the rock pile blocks the path mm. of the cart tracks. So the only other option you have, I mean, you can move the rocks and try to clear the way for the cart path, or mm -hmm. you have this fissure of very skinny space that goes down to the left. No, nah, I'm moving the rocks. <laughs> moving the rocks? <laughs> Robin doesn't want to slide through the fissure into the darkness. <laughs> She's got them hips. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's got You're some awesome. juice. <laughs> She's got a little juice. All right. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're heavy, but you can move them. This isn't like a check to move. Um, so, yeah, you spend, let's say, the next 15 minutes clearing rock so your alarm goes off again but you have cleared enough of a space and again with your headlamps you can just squeeze through this sort of hole you've made in the rocks and you can see that the mine tracks go deep darker dark and deep into the rest of this this mountain ahead of you well we're in this far let's go yeah can you can you fit through hips okay <laughs> my granny we need the poo great. style <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay. okay. Robin, you going first? Mm -hmm. All right, Robin, you, you know, squeeze the first half of you. You do have to rotate your hips a little bit to figure out the best way for them to make their way through. But you're able to, yes, Feruza will piglet, uh, <laughs> piglet push you through. Um, and you pop out on the other side. Um, you From this side, you can see where the rocks from above, there's sort of almost an open chasm above where clearly all these rocks sort of came down and filled in the space. Um, uh, but on this side, the carts continue straight. They then branch right and left. There's a little uh, like um, switch in the tracks going ahead. The um, other two, I assume, if you want to follow close behind her. Robin's going to once again kind of 
feel the air, feel if there's a draft or anything coming from one direction. Uh, feeling the air, yeah. Um, I mean, I think we did this before. You, do you have a flame? No, that was Neb. That was Neb, okay. Uh, but I think uh, uh, we have a lighter, right? We do have Silas's ring. I also <laughs> have a lighter. Yeah, if you want to use oh, your lighter. We need like a flicker, yeah, to catch the trick. That was what we learned mm. before. Yeah. Or we could use a string. But, uh, yeah, you can also just feel. You can also just feel for the draft. It's up to you. Okay. Okay. It's okay. a perception. Uh, I would like you to roll that. It's a plus two. Okay. You feel a draft from the right. That's a heavier draft coming from the right. Well, I can feel it in my bones to go to the right. What do you guys think? Um, I don't feel anything in my bones, but I trust your bones because you've done a lot in this life. Uh, what do you think, Maeve? No. If you think that's the way to go, sure, why not? Yeah. And she starts on, on pulling, All right, spooling I'm thread. Spooling, spooling that thread and walking forward. Yeah. It's very yeah. quiet and very cold down here. Um, as you're moving forward, again, in the, in the headlamp, you can see your breath ahead of you. Um, as you take each little step, the cold sort of biting in uh, the echo of your, um, you know, your breath and your footsteps on the walls. Um, as you sort of make this right-hand turn and follow these tracks about 20 feet ahead, you see a cart. Oh. Oh. It's a cart. Uh, let's check it. Okay. As you move up to the cart, you see a placard on the side of it <laughs> with the subsequent number. Uh, on it, it says this is the type of cart that would have been used to transport, uh, you know, ore that they had found deep within the stope of gold uh, and take it back to the mine elevator to bring it to the surface and process it. Is, is it, it blocking, right is it blocking our way? No, you can get around it. Okay. okay. Inside, it is filled with mounded rock um, that, again, has little flecks of gold in it, sort of as a, a demonstration. Demonstration, okay. Well, we can either go around it, or do we want to look through the dirt? Do you See think there's anything under it? Yeah, shall we just... Dump just it over? Dump it, well, yeah, sure. Okay. Cruz is gonna, <clears throat> and just push the entire <laughs> cart over. <laughs> And the ground. <laughs> Topples, this is just destruction of museum property going on here. <laughs> it just feels good lately, and I don't know why. Uh, you push the cart over, uh, all of the rock sort of stumbles out, you know, tumbles out of the top. As you come around to look, you see very quickly this has like a false bottom. It's only about a foot deep, even though the cart is closer to three feet deep. And there, the, the, the rocks, now that they're sort of falling out, are styrofoam. Mm -hmm. um, they have sort of been painted to look like rock with gold striations in them. Um, and so, yeah, there's this sort of this, it's a very shallow tray on top of this cart. Can we lift that shallow, that false bottom? As you kind of touch it, it feels like a uh, uh, ply, like a um, um, balsa woody. It's very light. Mm -hmm. it's, it, you can't lift it out, but it's very thin, flimsy. Can, we, can we move the rocks? You can, oh, yes. And just see if there's anything under there. Um, I mean, the, the rocks, the styrofoam rocks spilled out when Faroos knocked Completely, okay. So yeah, and there's, is there anything the on, like, inside the cart, written on the cart, around the Other than that little placket, um, give me an investigation. Okay. Faroos, this is what I want you to do. I want you to karate chop through the wood. So it's a 19. Um, so this with me. There's nothing else written on it, um, but you do, you can tell that this is old. This is probably an original cart from back in the day, the kind of thing they would have actually used. Um, you can tell that the false bottom is newer and was installed uh, you know, specifically for this sort of educational purpose, demonstrative purpose. Um, the wheels also seem functional. They're, they squeak like crazy when you move them. They're not oiled very well, but the cart will move along the track. I say we empty it out. You, you don't know what we might need down the line. All right, let's get rid of this false bottom. Okay. Rosa. 
<laughs> Fantastic. Uh, it doesn't yeah. take much. You've got good enough aim. Exactly. Just I mean, you pull the whole thing, splinters yeah, to pieces. She just um, taps it's a big, it. empty. It's a loud. Like you all sort of hear it, kind of thunder through the uh, through the area as you pull that false bottom up. Um, and it's a good sized cart, so, you know, about two and a half, three feet deep. Um, you know, probably two to three feet wide and another foot and a half, two feet, or long, two and a half feet uh, wide, um, you know, proper little cart. Um, as you, you know, if you ride it back up onto those rails and you can kind of move it along, uh, yeah. it does make a horrible screeching, squealing noise as the metal against metal, but. Uh, Let's see if there's anything I have in my bag. Or does anyone I've have got, anything? I've got olive oil. oil. <laughs> I've got Nasal bug spray. Bug spray. Bug spray. <laughs> It's usually quite greasy. Mm. And I've got sunscreen. Sunscreen that might work. Are you want to try some sunscreen? Yeah. I'll All right, you, just, you squirt some sunscreen on the uh, the axles there. <laughs> it does seem to relieve some of the squeak. It, it, uh, it does still make noise, but it's not quite as horrendous. So I take it we're taking this with us, yes? Yeah, I mean. All right. Cool. All right. You start to walk it forward then? You're going to continue yeah. down that way? Yep. All right. You continue to walk it forward. Uh, just as the alarm is going off on your phone of another 15 minutes having passed, um, you feel yourself, the air really get kind of, um, the draft picks up. Um, and ahead of you, the cavern opens up quite wide. You're not quite sure the actual you know, space that this is taking up because your headlamps don't reach the other side of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the tracks go off into the darkness. You can see a bit of a trestle underneath the tracks ahead of you. What is a trestle? A trestle, <laughs> so like a, a wooden bridge, essentially, that holds up the tracks. So then there would be nothing underneath it? There are, I mean, you can't see the ground but there are wooden posts and you know it is it is a the tracks are supported by some kind of structural bridge that just yeah. sort of disappears into the darkness oh we have 15 minutes left do we try to i don't run want to for say it that. i wouldn't say run i, I mean maybe does, does it look sturdy does it look like it's in decent shape or does it look like it's unstable uh you could do a How can we test investigation oh so maybe just can... from, from what you can see from here. Um, I'd like to help okay. kind of, yeah, if I can. I will um, not. You want to use your history of structure, yeah. Robin? I'll, okay. I'll use my history, which is a plus five. Oh, okay. Wow. Ooh, plus. What well, would be the history base? So it would just be your intelligence. intelligence. Yeah, it, this is a, you know. Oh, a, a special a, thing? Well, no, not quite. It is an older bridge. And just from growing up, knowing yeah. how older bridges were, you know, architecturally made and stuff. True. Okay. So am I using the history number or the intelligence number? Uh, we'll go with her history because we're... So plus five? Plus five. To oh, sorry. Role. Yeah, I should have done the intelligence. So that's going to be in 18. An 18. Um, <clears throat> so you and Robin go down and look at it together. And Robin, you're sort of pointing out from your experience what you've seen. Okay. Um, what to robin's experience this is correctly made so the structure looks like from what you can see now again your headlamps give you five feet of light so you're not seeing a ton more into the darkness um you know five to ten feet of light there uh but from what you can see robin it looks like what is made is correctly made from your experience and Maeve, it looks to you like while the bolts are old they don't seem to be too rusty there's not that much moisture down here, uh, so it looks fairly sound. Okay. So what do you guys uh, think? I think it looks relatively stable. I mean, as long as we don't lose our step, we can make it across. Okay. <laughs> we, have, we have 15 minutes, so it's do or die time, ladies. Let's just see what's on the other let's side not, of this. Let's not bring death into this mix here, if we can help it. Um, and then Feruza would like to pick up a styrofoam rock and like toss it at Maeve. <laughs> <laughs> um, question, is yeah. the placard, again, in terms of attachment, what is this, 
strongly bolted in? Is this something that's removable? Um, yeah, this one looks like you could maybe remove it easier than the other one. Okay, I'll, I'll the on the side of the card. I'll pull out my tools and and give that a shot. Okay, go ahead. Uh, let's do thieves um, tools. Yeah, thieves tools. That's great. Let's do thieves tools. So that's a dirty twenty. Absolutely. Oh. Um, using your tools, you can get underneath and pry it out. Um, you know, this was just through the sort of side metal. Um, it leaves little holes where the bolts went through, but you're able to sort of unscrew them and remove the placard. Mm -hmm. um, looking at it, is there anything interesting about it? Is there anything different about it? It looks just like the other one. It has the same sort of uh, design to it. It's uh, old, but not as old as the cart. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if the cart is more like 70 to 100 years old, this is maybe 40 to 50 years old kind of thing. Um, uh, nothing really particularly special about it. It's a fairly thin tin, uh, you know, placard. Okay. No manufacturer's marks, nothing like that. Nothing like that. That's really, okay. if anything, Perfect. to that point, um, it, it does not seem sort of commercially, you know, this wasn't ordered somewhere. It was, it Got was it. made by somebody, yeah, pressed cool. in tin. All right, well, Robin right, being the oldest and less worried about dying is going to go first. So is your okay. plan to walk along the the uh, cross phrases of this? Or are you getting in the cart? Or are you taking the cart behind you? I'm going to do the, the cross beams. As All right, so you're going to, so Robin's going to walk on the cross beams. Uh, okay. Is the cart going behind you, ahead of you? Are you leaving I want to go ahead of us. So if anything okay. starts to break, it'll be over that. You're going to push the cart ahead of you as you step out on the cross beams of this trestle bridge into the darkness. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Pausing. Before we start doing that, though. <laughs> no, no. Let's see. Finish Faruza's thought, and then we'll go back upstairs. Wait a minute. <laughs> um, Faruza's going to take Silas's ring out of her pocket and turn it on and, like, sit it conspicuously in the ground lit up. <laughs> I don't know. That's like a little marker. Yeah, the was here. Marker. Yeah, this is where we went. Gotcha. Yeah, and just well, sits it in the ground where it's glowing, like off to the side. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, as Robin takes the first step out onto the trestle bridge into the darkness, with the cart in front of her, immediately Robin, you just feel that of just sort of air everywhere, um, immediately feeling that you are just this very tiny presence in a large space as you step onto the first beam. Now, there's a good, you know, your feet can fit on a beam. You can take a step from beam to beam. So here's how I think we're going to play this. As you move forward, you're about five feet out, and you can begin to feel your body just shake and tremble a little bit as you really sense there's nothing to grab onto. Please give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh boy. Against fear. Oh no, no, no. I'm gonna do this one on my diehard dice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> diehard. No. Come on, crisis crystals. Yeah, it's time to break out the diehard dice. All right, that's not bad, that's a 17. Oh, a 17. But you're able to grip the edge of that mind cart and just practice maybe some breathing exercises that you've learned from a number of different gurus, you know, throughout your life, uh, the different people that you've spoken with <laughs> and steady yourself and take a few steps forward. You're about 10 feet out on this track. Now you can even feel the wood of it sway slightly, ever so sllightly side to side. Maeve and Feruza, are you going to follow? We're standing there watching her, holding hands like, oh my God, please let her don't fall. Please let her fall. Uh, re ready? Uh, not holding hands, no. That's it is the only wide enough for a single file. All right, all right, I'll go. I'll do it. I'll do it. If Rhyme can do it, what am I scared of? While well, she's, she's just, just kind of talking to herself, Maeve's just gonna go. Maeve's gonna go. <laughs> All right, Maeve, as you step out onto this trestle bridge, one foot at a time across the open space between these beams, you get about five feet out. And again, just as you saw happen to Robin, you just feel 
the space around you and you make the terrible mistake of looking down into the darkness below. Please give me a wisdom saving throw. Okay. That's a 17. A 17. There's a little wobble in your knees as you lean to the right, but you're able to sort of hold yourself upright. Um, Unfortunately, you didn't conquer your fear, but in this moment, you are still upright on these planks. Robin, you continue forward another five feet. Because of your learning and teaching, you continue to make your way forward. Um, Maeve, you were following behind for Ruza. Are you third? Ruza's still talking to herself at the okay. end. She's like, they wouldn't have this in here if it was meant to be dangerous for people to come see, and they're already walking on it, so I can go. And Ferza's just gonna start walking on the plank, but she's gonna take a deep breath first. I'm like, I did take two years of ballet. And then start walking the plank. Fantastic. So each of you, you're kind of keeping the back of the person in front of you within your light. Um, so you can just sort of see you're about five feet apart as you very slowly and carefully make your way across. Um, so Feruza, as Maeve steps to sort of the 10 foot spot, Robin, you're about 15 feet out now in this void. Feruza, as you make it to five feet and the sort of safety of the wall behind you disappears, I'll need a wisdom saving throw. Oh no, this is not gonna be 12. 12. You look down. And suddenly, with the light on your feet and the, 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 the open space below, you just feel a swirl of vertigo kind of rise up in your chest as your, your, your throat grips and you begin to topple over to the side, feeling your body go over the side. Uh, you have a dexterity saving throw if you would like to grab on. Yes. <laughs> Come on. 17. Seventeen. As you fall over the edge, you just reach your arms up, gripping onto the rail at the side. It is cold, slippery, you know, uh, metal. Uh, it would burn anyone else's hands except for yours. You are accustomed to the cold in your fingers as you hold on and s scream for help. Is that too much for a license? <laughs> oh my God! You guys, I fell. As your feet dangle in the bare space below, kicking every once in a while, one of the wooden trestles. Uh, Maeve, you hear this behind you and turn around and can just <laughs> see Feruza's fingers gripping onto the metal uh, rail behind you. Robin, it's, you know, through Maeve's light, you can just see her dangling. I, 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 I don't know what you want me to do. I'm not strong enough to pull you up. So you're gonna, you're, you're, you're the pull-up queen. You just, that's how I can do this. What? What, what did you say, Maeve? What? You do pull-ups. You're strong. Just do a pull-up. Pull yourself up. Put your feet on the truss or the 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 beam, yeah. the cross beam, and 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 climb. These shoes are Burberry. I'm gonna lose them. Okay, oh no! Are, are you wearing heels as we walk across this thing? That's your first problem. Okay. Okay. I'm strong. I'm strong. And right as she's saying that, if you could see her face, like her eyes start flashing. Little lightning bolts go through her eyes, like, like, almost like electricity. She's going to breathe and, uh, and she's going to make that noise too. And then she's going <laughs> to it's like her, she's pulling herself up and it's almost like nothing. And she pulls herself up perfectly till she's just sitting on the tracks and she like looks at her hands and her hands have like these have like almost like static electricity in their palms if you if you electrocute us all we're gonna have problems <laughs> <laughs> all right maybe now you should spider climb across you know use your hands and your feet it'd be safer especially for how tall you are good idea Cruz is gonna turn over to like her knees and hands uh -huh. and just scoot, like start crawling slowly on the plank Forward on her hands and knees. Okay, um, continuing? 
Yeah. The three of you? Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Five feet at a time, moving yourself yeah. forward. Um, Robin, you are now 20 feet. Maeve, 15. Fru is a 10. When you get to the 30 foot mark in the center of this space, you all can feel just this slight little sway side to side as your weight moves this track a little bit. Um, there's a creak in the wood uh, of it. Um, you think at this point, Robin, you hear it. You can't tell if it's the rush of air or what it is, but there's kind of a shh consistent almost white noise sound coming from perception okay. <laughs> oh come on oh god it was a nat one well that's still <gasps> oh wait no that was a seven sorry looking like a nat seven. one okay it's a so nine. you don't know it's sort of all around you as if you've stepped into this you know the echoing of this space all around you um Maeve, give me another wisdom saving throw because you were, unless, have you started crawling as well? Or are you still standing up or? Um, it's just so. Uh, um, no, I need to. Uh, All right, wisdom I saving throw. Uh, 16. 16. You also stay standing, but again, you can't quite shake this instinct to keep like looking down or sort of just that this well of it. So while you're still standing now, you don't have the confidence that Robin seems to have as she moves forward. All right. How far out is, is the, is there like any sense of where this ends yet? Not yet, no. Again, your lights only give you, you know, Robin can only see about five to 10 feet in front of her. Okay. Uh, and she's 30 feet out and so far she does not see the end of it. I have an idea. I have, maybe you guys should turn back and I'll see what's on the other end. It's, I mean, I, I didn't think it would be this, this long. All right, we've already violated the horror movie rules enough. We're not leaving you alone. Not gonna, yeah, that's true. We're not going to leave. What are we going to tell Neb and Silas that we left Robin in a cave? <laughs> right. Imagine. Just, you know, just, all right, we'll just keep going. We'll keep going. All right. You keep pushing forward. Mm -hmm. um, Robin, another 10 feet. You're now 40 feet out, now ahead of you. Just at the edge of your light, you think you see the tracks reach solid ground. I, I think we're almost there. All right. We are. I think. I just keep Keep, keep walking moving. forward. As you get there, now you're sure of it, Robin. You push the cart ahead of you, and you step forward feeling the security of solid ground ahead of you as you step down and turn around to see Maeve shaking <laughs> taking a few steps forward. I need one last wisdom saving throw from you, Maeve. Oh boy. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Wow. Finally. As if willing it. I don't know what, you know, what the thought is that goes in through your, your brain, Maeve, that, that sort of settles I think, you. I think I actually almost jump that last Yes. <laughs> like I just I want it done. I'm just gonna Really <laughs> there. Um, and I sort of almost just jump forward to try and miss the rest of the thing. So I don't even have to deal with it. I go, oh, that's easier than just like shimmying. <laughs> yeah. Just Fantastic. Like, so yeah. So Maeve, seeing the prize, <laughs> the safety at mm -hmm. the other end, just sort of launch yourself forward. And, and when I, when yeah. I land, I say, next time I'm riding in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Feruza behind you is on all fours, <laughs> crawling oh, forward. Me. You are absolutely scared out of your mind, but uh, you are at less risk of falling as you pull yourself forward yeah. on all fours. You are slower yeah. than the others, so you were a little bit further behind. Uh, it mm -hmm. takes a little bit longer, but you also make your way uh, onto solid ground. Ugh. She stands up and dusts off her hands and feet. Okay. I don't okay. know if we're going back that way. Next time, let's take the cart. Okay. 
Okay. Who's going to push point, us in it? If all three of us are we, in we it, we can figure something out, I'm sure. At this point, you hear the shh, shh all of sound? you. Now it seems very clearly to be coming from ahead of you. But we're going to pause where we are with you now and go back upstairs with uh, Silas and Neb. I really wish the others had come with us. This is a great party. Uh, uh, Neb, uh, let, let's stay on task. Listen, I, I, I want to be really, really clear. I'm a fan of so many things, and I am a huge Neb fan because you have been talking to animals and apparently you can turn into at least uh, well i started to say mice but it's a rat at least a rat um well i'm a fan I, of you because that hurt and now it doesn't so <laughs> well thank i you. mean it, i kind of inflicted it so i felt very obligated to you, um, you didn't know you, i mean i barely knew uh, it, yeah so but um you know not to like hold their feet to the fire too much or anything but we did kind of say that we would like get them their blessings if they showed us where this mirror is. So, um, like, you know, this party, like, when's this party wrapping up? <laughs> That's going to remind Neb to very quickly pull out her phone and look how much time is left before the hour that we're supposed to go back is up. Yes. Yeah, so for you, you're at about half an hour. Okay. So you've got half an hour left. Uh, yeah. Oh, let me. Let me see if I can find out at least how far away it is yeah, because if it's we only not too much trouble. Yeah, yeah. And I will find Nicholas. Hi. This has been so much fun. Hello. So yes. Oh, it's amazing. And they're all sort of like, "Oh." They're all very excited about the blessing. Uh we only have a little bit of time before we have to meet our friends again. Yes. Of course, um, yes. Can you tell us where the shard is or, or bring us there or tell us how far it is? Uh, he says, he goes, down, down, down uh, is the shard, but you must find the messages first. And I've been translating for Silas, and then I'll point over at the message that was under Christine. Like that? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, ask, them, ask them if they know how many messages there are. How many messages are there to get to the shard? Um, he 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 sort of looks down at his paws. He's like, ah, so many many messages. Okay, rats. all right. Okay, um, they're, they're rats, Silas. They're rats. Give me a second. Give me um, how can you get there and back before it's time to sleep again? Um, he's, uh, give me a quick, uh, oh, uh, I'll do this. Hold on. Okay. 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 Um, as you tell, make a decision. Um, he sort of, he likes you, right? And you can see this little sort of mischievous smile goes and he says, um, he says, I can show you how to get down, but the messages are on the level. You'll find one on each level. Oh, okay. Do, do you have to find the messages in order to get to the shard, or can we just yes, go yes. down? That's what the mysterious one did. Uh, oh, and, and after she translates, Silas says, oh, yeah, I, I knew that as as the high prophet <laughs> priest of, of the, mysterious. the mysterious one. I, I, I was well aware of that. I was just, t tell him I was testing their, uh, you know, uh, testing their commitment to the faith of the mysterious one. Um, but uh, so that means that we've already skipped over messages, Neb. Okay, but now we know. Now, now we know we that have to true. go see these messages. And uh, it sounds like, and I'll look back at Nicholas and ask Nicholas. So we got to find a message on floor one floor two this we found the message here and on the fourth floor ooh, ooh, ooh. Ask, ask him if there's a message where we slept last night what or is that like floor zero or is that floor one 
it's obvious Neb is having, a, well, yeah, she's having this moment in where these are rats. How do I explain this to rats? These are rats. Do I, do I remember seeing a, a message, a plaque or something like this? He, so, um, no, you don't remember seeing anything like that on that first level. Um, yeah, let me know what, what do you, what do you say to Nicholas? Uh, she's going to say, is there just one on every level or is there more than one? He says one on every level. Does that include where we were sleeping? He, he sort of looks sly. He crawls up your arm to your shoulder and whispers in your ear. He says, no, that is where the key. You need a key as well? The key is the name. Oh, th now that, that looks conspiratorial. What's he saying now? And I'll say to Nicholas, uh, we brought him because he understands what the 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 old one did. I'm just the translator. And then to Silas, I'll explain all of that. Mm -hmm. There's oh wait, there's a key. Ask him what the key looks like. What, ask him what the key is. What does? What's the key? As the alarm goes off down below with the three of you ladies, and it has now been 45 minutes, as it starts to get to that point for you guys there, all of the rats turn towards you, Neb, and they all say, Steve. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. And with that, <laughs> we will conclude this episode of Children of Ante. A tad early, I apologize. Um, <laughs> but the key is, Steve, you will find messages on every level and time is running out. So if you um, thank you all seconds. so much for being here and enjoying this with us. And remember that life itself is the most wonderful fairy tale. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye.